I'm Josh, this is Colin, and this is Perseverance, our floating off-grid home. Come explore with us as we sail to new places, we learn how to protect our environment, and see how we coexist with nature. We'll also make lots of friends along the way. Today I'm going to try to install this uh, remote windless uh, remote, windless remote. Uh, it seems like it'll be pretty easy. I've looked at the wiring diagram. Uh, it looks like it should work. The wiring is the same as a winch and it'll let me uh, use a little remote to raise and lower the, um, or the anchor. So if I'm not with Colin, I'm hoping to be able to do it from the cockpit. These are nice, seemingly nice little remotes. I mean, they were pretty inexpensive, like $15 on Amazon or something. So we'll see how they work. Um, this box had decent reviews. There's a bunch of them on there. I'll link the one that I have uh, listed on Amazon, the one that I got, and I'll let you know how, how it works. And I'm also going to try and grease if I have time. Um, we're already at it's like noon or something. I've got a lot going on, but uh, the next day or two I'm going to try and uh, grease and do general maintenance that should have been done long ago on our uh, windlass as well. Um, so we'll see how it looks when I take it apart. Hopefully it's not too uh, gunked up. Check it out. All right, so I just finished uh, wiring in this remote winch uh, control, and it was fairly simple for a boat project. And uh, we use it on our windlass so that I can operate, or Colin can operate, the windlass from the cockpit. Uh, first, we'll do the we'll do the regular buttons, the ones that were installed. Uh, at the windlass, and then uh, we'll show you this cool little remote that I got on Amazon. It has a little cover. It's like $15, and I got two remotes. So. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, it'll make it much easier to solo anchor. I might be doing coming up in the Chesapeake, so stay tuned. <sighs> okay, so keep up on your maintenance with this thing better than we have because this was corroded. I'm sure it's corroded in here. Um, I had to take uh, this six inch crescent wrench and because uh, I don't have our bar um, to release the clutch or whatever. So 
I had to pull on it, and luckily it broke free, so we'll see how the rest of it goes. Doesn't look too bad. Unfortunately, I soon gave up on this project, as after an hour of poking, prodding, prying, and banging, I could not get this thing pulled apart. But stay tuned for our next episode, where I finish this project while we sailed between anchorages. So I'm grocery shopping today. I went to the uh, Municipal Marina docks, which are downtown. Uh, probably like a five to seven minute dinghy ride. Um, the Publix is a lot closer than the Food Lion. Uh, we had just been to the Food Lion before, and I had to go to the Walgreens for some other stuff. So. Um, I went all the way up there, that was about a 23 minute walk, which is a lot to carry, or like far to carry these two heavy bags, but um, the Publix is closer if you just need a grocery shop. I'll put it on the map or show it or something. And uh, there was garbage, uh, just two regular uh, bins, I guess, but it said uh, pack in, pack outs, and the uh, dock master said I could throw trash in there, so I assume that's a good place to drop trash. Um, for anyone that's on the mooring balls or at the uh, municipal marina, there's probably like 10 slips um, and the uh, dinghy dock has tons of space for dinghies. Uh, right now we've got Elsa coming uh, or the remnants of Elsa so uh, we're gonna stay a few more days instead of uh, motoring up the ICW uh, so we, that might end up keeping us here until uh, the end of the month which will be fine. It's in Carolina Beach is actually a really nice spot. There's a lot of cool little bars and restaurants. Um, we've met some nice people uh, we met a girl the other day who uh, we were trying to get a, um, an Uber from the airport after going on our family vacation and they don't have any Ubers or Lyfts here, just not many. And so uh, we got a taxi, which they also don't have many of those right now, um, but we got a taxi and shared it with uh, this lady uh, whose parents live down here and uh, she was nice enough to drive us to the, to the food line to get groceries about a week ago. Anyway, keep you updated. The remnants of Elsa ended up being pretty chill. We just had a couple days of rain, but I did catch this really cool shot of lightning one night. It is Saturday, July 10th, and we are here in the mooring field at Carolina Beach Municipal Marina. And uh, today we're going off the ball. Uh, we're gonna go to the diesel dock just a little bit north of here, uh, fill up our tanks from our crossing uh, from Charleston and also top off the fresh water because we are down to our reserve tank and I want a long hot shower tonight. So uh, we'll be going to do that and uh, we're gonna go anchor because you can only stay on the balls for a certain number of days. Um, and we'll see how the anchorage is. It's just to the north of this morning field. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go and anchor for a couple days, one or two nights, and see how it is. Uh, it's a little too tight. We uh, are told we can hop back on a mooring ball um, after being off the ball for a night or two. So there's the anchorage over there. We're here in the mooring field. It's about, I think, 10 balls. Fuel dock is uh, just up the river there. We decided with Tropical Storm slash Hurricane Elsa that uh, we were going to stay in Carolina Beach for a little while longer and uh, Josh is going to have a friend come down to help him move the boat uh, north to the Chesapeake uh, when I go to um, out of town for a work trip unfortunately next week. It is crazy current but Josh did a stellar approach and docking thanks to the help of the dock hands. Okay. So time to fill up our diesel and water. These are the overflow vents for our fuel tank. We like to put a piggy pad over the vent to prevent it from draining overboard if we overflow our fuel tank while filling. This is that particularly rough fuel dock I mentioned in the last episode. This is on the corner of the river and with boat wakes coming by it can get pretty sloshy as you can see. This is the anchorage in Carolina Beach. It has very good holding. It's calm, quiet, and comfortable. Definitely worth checking out if you're in the area. Uh, today I'm trying to re-caulk uh, part of our shower, uh, part of it that leaks underneath a wood board. 
Um, I took the board out and I'm realizing it's rotted, so uh, we should probably replace it, but for now, um, I, we're moving up to uh, Annapolis, so I need to get it done so we can use the shower and not continue to leak water all over the bathroom floor. Um, I'll show you the uh, where the old board was. Uh, when I took it out, there were two screws that I couldn't see. They were hidden inside the wood at an angle. Um, so when I popped the uh, when I popped this wood out, I damaged part of the trim. Um, so I'll see if I can glue that back together and uh, get that sealed again. But I'll show you what I got here. So the piece of wood that I took out um, was in here. And I'll replace that eventually, but there is uh, this caulk line here that uh, was leaking. So I'm just gonna re-caulk that, use the same piece of wood, and I'll do it again uh, when, we, when I have time to get a new piece of wood uh, in a couple weeks, probably. While Colin was away at work, our friend Nate helped me with this section of the journey. Uh, we were going to do five separate day sails in about 40 to 60 mile increments, going from Carolina Beach all the way up to Norfolk through the Outer Banks. Our first section was 43 miles and we would end in Mile Hammock Bay. After a very comfortable day motor sail, we ended up in Mile Hammock Bay. This anchorage is extremely well protected from all directions, and there's some helicopters operating from a nearby military base. They only flew till about 10 or 11 p.m., and then it was very quiet the rest of the evening. I would definitely recommend this anchorage if you're on your way through the Outer Banks. Join us next time as I finally get the windlass disassembled and greased, and we end up in the middle of an impromptu powerboat race. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. It really helps our channel grow. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us on Patreon.